This is Hardcore Minecraft with a twist. In this video, we have three different objectives. Number one, we need to kill the Ender Dragon. Number two is to acquire the Netherite Black Opal Double Axe. As you guys can see, this is a completely modded item that is not in vanilla Minecraft. Comparing the damage to the sword does seven, the axe does nine, and the double axe does 17. Our third and final challenge in this 100 day series is to acquire full netherite armor. Day one, we spawn on top of a tree and we instantly look for our friend Forrest. And we see him across uh, what looks to be a ravine. So we first off jump off this tree and we do what every bro does. We smack each other a couple times. And now that we found each other, we're debating what we're gonna do. And I suggested, let's get some trees. So from this point on, Forrest and I just kind of farm trees for quite a while. Once we got the wood, we decided to make our crafting table, make our sticks, and then we went to make our axe and realized we didn't have enough wood, so we had to go uh, and get some more wood. And after farming some wood, we decided might as well look inside the ravine, let's see if there's any goodies in there, and yeah, it looked pretty freaky, so we didn't really want to go down there just yet. We did what everybody does, we went ahead and made our wooden pickaxe, and made our way over to the mine to start getting materials for our stone items. And after getting gathering enough cobblestone, we went ahead, made our pickaxe, and we decided to make a sword just in case any mobs tried to kill us. So after making our sword, we decided it was a good idea to go get some food because neither of us had any. I heard a buzzing sound and realized that there was a beehive on the tree. What I didn't realize is that it can poison you, and that poison lasts for a very long time, and I actually almost died to it. As you can see, it got us to one and a half hearts. And just remember, if we die, we have to restart the entire world. Shout out to that sheep for sacrificing itself. I was now able to get myself back to full HP after eating the sheep meat. After slaughtering a few more sheep and eating more of their meat, I know it's kind of weird, but you know, that's kind of what you do. Um, anyways, we found this abandoned shipwreck and, and yeah, that's a bumblebee. We like to stay away from those. So we decided to investigate inside of the shipwreck and I saw these trap doors and figured there must be a room under there and there was and we found ourselves some depth shatter boots, some rotten flesh, some gunpowder. For you guys that don't know, depth shatter boots make you swim faster so that was actually really convenient. And since we were low on food, there was fish so we just kind of slaughtered everything. As day one is coming to a close, Forrest and I decided it would probably be a good idea to clear out some space to make our base. So we grabbed our shovels and we start removing all of this dirt. After farming some of the dirt, we got snuck up on by this green creature known as the Creeper. And while I'm killing that, Forrest is going ahead and starting the build on our structure. We needed a place to live. We needed some sort of protection from all of the mobs. So the building begins. We go ahead by starting to make a door just so that we have a way in and out of our base. That's obviously extremely important. And then we go ahead and just start kind of trying to fill everything in here. Now guys, keep in mind, we aren't really trying to make the prettiest base just yet. All right, it's not gonna look that good. It's not gonna look that even. All of that stuff is out of the question. Right now, we are just trying to build a base somewhere that we can literally survive the night. With running out of wood, we decided to patch the rest of the base up with dirt, surviving day one. In the dawn of day two, we decided to craft a stone halberd, which is actually a secret weapon that looks a lot cooler than it actually is. We actually figured out later on down the line that it does less damage than a regular stone sword. As I was walking around looking for more food, I heard a lot of spiders and got really curious if there's a spawner of some sort underneath or if there's some sort of cave system. And look what happens. I end up finding a spider spawner in the ground. So just to be safe, I called Forrest over to the hole and said, you know, hey, look in here, look what I found. And he says, James, why are you even looking in a hole, dude? There's a completely different way in. It literally leads directly to the spider spawner. And at this point, I kind of felt stupid. So anyways, we found a spider spawner. Before I forget to mention, there was a fire aspect one book in there. That is a W. I made another trip to the shipwreck that we found earlier and realized we didn't loot all of the chests, so we actually managed to find some iron ingots, some emeralds in this one. 
And then after finding the one chest, Forrest did a little run through and found another chest with a buried treasure map. So maybe at some point we are going to be able to find some new treasure. Now, after finding the iron in the shipwreck, we were able to actually make ourselves an iron pickaxe and a chest plate. Now, the crazy thing is, I thought we were out of iron, but there was actually one more piece of iron inside of the chest. So I was able to make Forrest a chest plate as well as me a chest plate. So uh, we decided it was a good idea to go do some adventuring. Right across from where our base was, we found these massive like ice-like mountains, and we also spent spotted some polar bears. Now, we were very unsure whether they would attack you or not. We've never encountered a polar bear before, so we needed to find out. So, me being the dumb one, I walked right up to the mama bear right next to the cub, and yeah, the polar bear just essentially started chasing me in forest, and we ran for our lives, not realizing that it is also getting very dark. Day three is approaching. At this point, Forrest and I really just realized how badly we messed up. By the looks of it, there's an infinity amount of mobs kind of just lined up around our base, and we were literally just looking for any angle to get in. After carefully observing the coast, I found an opening. There was mobs on either side of me, so I wanted to be really, really careful. And on the way to the base, I saw another little green thing, and I figured, you know what? I don't like green things, okay? All my homies hate green things. We like to kill these green things. So yeah, we give it a couple smacks, and we killed it, and we quickly ran inside of our base before we got overwhelmed. All right, and after just barely making it home from day two, we survived until day three. We figured it was about time that we make our way into the ravine and start mining all the materials. After depositing some of our materials, we decided to get a water bucket and some torches and we wanted to make our way down into the ravine. All right, and after observing all of these monsters, I realized that the current is pushing them away, and I saw an opportunity when a creeper arrived, and I just let the creeper do the dirty work for me. After spending four days of mining that entire ravine, we decided it was time to gather up all the supplies we retrieved from that ravine, gather up any important materials like that fire aspect book and a ton of other things that we got. We decided it was time to pack our bags and move out. It was time to move out of our shack, ladies and gentlemen. And so with our bags packed in the middle of the night, in the middle of a storm, we go, we hop in our boats and we say adios to our old house. It is time to find a new place. It is time to move on. And so we did. And after three days of constant thunderstorm through the ocean, we finally found land. And as soon as we pull up to the shore, I get instantly greeted by a friendly arrow to the back of my head. So, we do, we do what everybody's supposed to do, and we take down this skeleton, alright buddy? This is our place now. After running for a couple of minutes on the land, we found a pretty good location. Lots of animals and lots of open space, so we decided we're gonna set up camp here. And while Forrest was digging out the area for the house, I decided it would be a good idea to get some more wood. And after we dug out around our base and we got, you know, the outline of our base set up, we decided it was a good idea to go to bed, making it to day 11. We wasted no time in getting into day 11. As you can see, we finished the floors. Forrest is working on the outer farms and it was time for me to go get some sand to make glass. After farming sand for what seemed to be a century, we realized that our shovel is actually nearly broken and we looked up in the sky and realized that, wow, it's actually getting fairly late and I'm not trying to get jumped by mobs, so we head back to base. Just before we get into day 12, we watch the sunset. Day 12 arrived as we started smelting up all of our glass and we start building the outer frames of our base. After more or less finishing the base, other than the roof being open, we decide it's time to go to bed, making it to day 13. While Forrest is working on making the farms, I figured I'd better make use of myself. We actually were running low on food, so we needed to go on a slaughter spree.
I'm sorry guys, that was extremely toxic. Here's a picture of when I went bald before. Guys, this could happen again at 200k subs. Anyways, as I was running around, I saw a natural forest fire happening and I just thought like, you know what, this is this is pretty toxic. I need to I need to put out this fire before it gets out of hand and I actually ended up burning a little bit. I guess that's uh, that's a little bit of karma for killing all the animals. As you can see, the sun is finally starting to set and I'm looking around like, oh god, I am still in the middle of nowhere. Why did I have to run so far away to kill pigs and cows, dude? So yeah, now I'm kind of panicking, having to run back to base and hopefully I don't crap my pants here. As you guys can see, we're getting pretty close to base. We've got like a little spider chasing us. But my goodness, look at the progress we have made so far. Just in 13 days on our base alone, Forrest has got that farm looking nice. And uh, yeah, I think it's about time we go to bed. Making it to day 14. Throughout the day, I've just been placing torches literally everywhere around our base. Obviously, the mobs aren't able to spawn if everything is lit up. So, as you guys can see, Forrest has made quite a lot of progress on his farm. There's still some mobs that have been able to sneak through because obviously I wasn't able to place the torches legit everywhere. But we tried our best to mainly cover the perimeter of our base. As you can see, there's a couple dark spots here. The mountain hasn't been lit up, but we did a fairly good job. In the morning of day 15, Forrest decided to make some shields. We are going to need these shields because we are going to be heading to the mines. Just like that, Forrest and I are now in the mines. We are trying to find a very, very big mine, and uh, we hit a couple very small mines earlier, but we decided not to record those because who wants to watch a little crappy mine? So anyways, we are now in this massive cave, and it is time to search for diamonds, but there's a lot of mobs that get in our way, so we gotta take those guys down as well. After some time goes by and some little strip mining later, Forrest says, we have found our first set of diamonds. So I mine a couple and he mines a couple, and yeah, it's just, it's a great feeling finding your first set of diamonds. As Forrest continues to mine some obsidian, we're clearly gonna need that for the nether portal. I continue strip mining for some more diamonds. After strip mining for the entire day, we unfortunately didn't have any more luck with diamonds today, so we went to bed, moving on to day 16. Midway into day 16, Forrest finds some more diamonds, and yeah, he did let me use the diamond pickaxe since I was leading the strip mine, but now we're both gonna have diamond pickaxes, so let's freaking go. So we found another cave and we are running around and we turned the corner, found some emeralds and looked on the ground. And we found ourselves another set of diamonds, but this got really scary really fast because as I was mining it, that is right, a creeper jumped on my head and I actually, I actually almost pooped myself. I, I, I'm not even joking guys, I almost pooped myself. As an entire day goes by, we are now at day 17. We finally found another vein of diamonds. And what we are going to do is go ahead and slaughter some diamonds. And after an eight day mining trip with Forrest, we decided it was time to put all of our ores together and just see kind of what we were able to get. We actually had to come back home because we were running really low on food. I already went through an entire diamond pickaxe, like I legitimately broke it because I mined too much and my other pickaxe was going to be breaking soon. But yeah, as you can see, we got a crap ton of ores. So the next thing up on my agenda was, well, essentially I had already placed torches legitimately everywhere. Like as far as the eye can see, there is torches, okay? So I figured it is time to start building a essential barrier around our entire perimeter and good thing uh you can build these cobblestone rails literally out of cobblestone so we have so ma so much cobblestone like obviously we we just mined for eight days straight so we have so much cobblestone and essentially yeah my objective here is just to build a massive perimeter around our entire base out of these cobblestone rails that way no monsters can get us after i finished placing the cobblestone rails 
else, I figured I'd do a little 360 to show you guys what we got done. And yeah, Forrest is working on the farms. Just shortly after I recorded the cobblestone rails, we saw that there was some llamas here and some weird looking villager. And we figured, huh, let's let them into our base. Hopefully they don't attack us, but maybe we could steal his llamas. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what we did. So one of his llamas got split off from him, right? So that was good. And then I figured, huh, I wonder if we could trade with him. And it didn't look like he could provide us with anything good. Uh, nothing worth value. So we did what anyone in their right mind would do. We tried to be nice. We essentially tried to push the llama off the lead so that, you know, the so that I could start riding the llama because I, I want the llama, dude. And yeah, it was stuck. So I did I did what any nice guy would do. Y y you murder his face. So I started punching this guy in the face with my axe and, and he died. And, and the llama wasn't very happy, dude. I, I didn't realize it, but this llama was spitting on my head. Like, every time I opened the door or walked out, this guy legitimately would spit on me. Like, <laughs> he'd literally spit. Stop spitting on me. Ow. The final thing we had to do to complete our llama was, of course, we had to name our llama. And what better name than to name ourselves bald at 200k. Boys, once again, make sure you are subscribing to the channel. We are going bald at 200k. And look at that. He is now going bald with me, baby. Let's go. So three days passed by as I had to go mining again. While I went mining, Force kept working on the base, but essentially we had to go mining again because we didn't have enough diamonds for both of us to get full diamond armor. And we really wanted to be able to go to the nether, but we didn't want to go to the nether without getting enchanted diamond armor. So. We went mining while Forrest worked on the base, and it looks amazing. Look at this. He made a little cow farm right here, like a little, it looks to be a sheep farm here as well. So that's, that's pretty awesome. He did that while we were gone. So these are essentially the ores and all of the items that I got from that mining run. I did end up finding a skeleton spawner. So, uh, yeah, I've got, as you guys can see, there's like a book in there, some, some horse armor, and I was able to get that from the chest that were next to the spawner. But now what we wanted to do was go ahead and make Forrest the rest of his diamond armor. I am already in my full diamond armor and yeah, now we are both going to be suited up. I had to make another pickaxe because yeah, I almost broke another diamond pickaxe. Like it's crazy how much you have to mine. So this is a little brief overview of what our entire base is kind of looking like right now. And also while I went mining, Forrest actually made this little enchanting room which goes down here which obviously isn't fully completed yet but i thought it looked awesome at the start of day 27 we ended up making our nether portal we then made a decision to start making our enchantment table as we didn't want to go into the nether and go to all these strongholds and these nether fortresses without actually having enchanted armor. So here's me, you know, kind of struggling to build an enchantment table, but uh, we ended up making it done and we wanted to go in there with enchants. So we made our enchantment table. After a couple days of mining, I finally made myself enough experience to be able to enchant some books. So we went ahead and just did as much enchanting as we can. And uh, we ended up doing this for about two days. So we essentially just went back and forth from the enchanter to the anvils. And we were basically just trying to get ourselves as strong as we can. Uh, enchanting sharpness on our axes and getting protection on our armor. Now that we were properly suited for the nether, Force and I decided to go in. And I also named my, my axe bald, okay, don't judge me. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, we made it to the nether. After carefully maneuvering around, we finally made ourselves up to here. Now, our main objective is to find some sort of fortress because we need to get the netherite black opal custom weapons, and that's exactly what we found here. We found some sort of fortress, and in these fortresses, they hold the custom weapons. After pillaring above lava, we actually made it to this fortress and we were really excited about it because obviously we really want to get these black opal netherite weapons, right? Um, but we have to be super, super cautious because these animals are not friendly. Encountering our first engagement, I get hit one time and it does three and a half hearts. Me and Forrest immediately run away because guys 
Imagine just three and a half hearts being taken away in one hit. Now imagine getting hit by that by like 10 other time, uh, 10 other of these creatures at the same time. You would just instantly die, so we had to play this very carefully. We are being very cautious, blocking every hole in the ground. We don't want to fall into any lava, but as you can see, we notice that there's some gold blocks and some chests in the middle. We didn't even realize, but some of these actually have bows, and they, they, they literally bow us, and also some of them like swan dive off the top and land on you. So we were very cautious about our surroundings, but we really needed to see if those netherite black opal custom weapons were inside of these chests. So we went ahead and started digging down, but we had to be careful because there was still so many mobs all around us. After making our way in, instantly my train of thought was like, do not open the chest, quickly, so just, just make yourself safe. Block out any angle that you can get killed, because obviously guys, if you die, the entire world deletes. So we are trying to just make sure we are as safe as possible before opening the chest. And ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to open up the chest. We just blocked up the last little bit of danger and we didn't get what we were looking for but we were able to find a god apple uh some netherite ore and uh you know just just like some diamond pants but it's really unfortunate that we didn't get it because obviously they only spawn inside of these taverns or whatever you want to call these strongholds so we decided it was a little dangerous so we were gonna come back later on but first we needed to find a nether fortress after roaming the nether for five days in the horrible, horrible nether terrain, we finally have found ourselves a nether fortress. Now, the reason why we wanted to find these is, of course, for the blaze rods. We are going to be able to make our brewing stands, and we're going to be able to make strength potions. And yeah, it's just super, super vital that we did find this nether fortress. And as you guys can see, in the distance... As we jump down here, there is an actual blaze spawner on the right side. So what we ended up doing is fully boxing in the blazes so that they couldn't escape. We farmed them for a little while, got the experience, the blaze rods, and got out. After three long days of running, we finally found our nether portal and we made it back to our base. The next step in our agenda was we really needed to get netherite. And what we needed to do was actually make really good use of our sheep farm and shear them and get a bunch of wool because we needed to make beds that explode in the nether. One day later, we made it to the nether after doing some more enchanting and we decided it is time to detonate these beds. So what you gotta do is get close to it, but not too close. And you right click it and there we go. Just like that, this is how we started looking for netherite. We continued this strategy over the course of the next seven days because we needed to get full netherite armor for the both of us as well as get netherite bow and arrows. We chose to venture back to the stronghold because we needed to find the netherite black opal custom weapons. We knew that we hadn't finished looting every chest yet because we had to leave earlier because we were too unsafe. After continuously being fireballed by this ghast, we managed to find two chests in here. One of them containing an iron sword, some netherite scrap, and the other one finally containing one of the netherite black opal series weapons. In this case, it was the hammer. We also got a pickaxe, some magma cream for fire res, and wow, that was our first success in finding one of the black opal series weapons. After running around this stronghold for what seemed to be a century, we finally went down these stairs and we found a double chest. And within this double chest was the netherite black opal double axe, doing 17 attack damage. This is by far the best weapon in the entire game, and we had just achieved it. And at last we returned home from our nether run, Forrest crafting up the brewing stands, and I decided for the next couple of days, while he's making all the potions, we are gonna just sit in the farms, farm as much as we can, get as much sugar cane as we can, and yeah, just relax for the next couple of days. The morning after, we finished farming, and we were relaxing outside, and Forrest has got me to build a nether wart farm. So, for the next two days, we started working on our nether wart farm, as well as breeding more animals. In the evening of day 52, after completing our nether wart farm, we got swarmed by a big group of phantoms who were very hungry. 
Good thing we have all of this diamond armor on and we acquired our netherite black opal series weapons because otherwise we probably would have been fresh meat for them. Over the course of the next four days, Forrest was working on building a horse stable while I had to run around the map trying to find horses to grab. And so yes, as you can see, the horse stable has been completed and all we were missing was another horse. Then finally on day 56, I was able to find another horse and so we let it in. We put the lead on the fence so they can't run away, and then we can breed them whenever we wish. And in the next evening of day 57, Forrest crafted himself full netherite armor and gave me the supplies to craft myself armor as well. All I gotta say is those bad explosions in the nether really, really do work. I definitely suggest trying them if you guys haven't already. But as you guys can see, we are finally at last forging our netherite armor. And me being kind of a dumbo, I keep putting the armor in the wrong slot. But anyways, we got ourselves full netherite armor. So our next objective is very grindy. It's not something we particularly wanted to do, but we needed to get a crap ton of levels. This took seven days. For six of those days, we were essentially running around the nether with our heads cut off, getting a crap ton of quartz, because obviously that's what gives us the levels. And then for the remainder day, we had to do a lot of enchanting. So the next thing we had to do was travel around for the next four days looking for endermen. The reason why we needed to kill all of these endermen is we actually need quite a bit of ender pearls and endermen are not the easiest to come by and that's kind of why it took four days. Uh, but essentially after we killed these endermen and got the ender pearls, that's what we're going to need to be able to get to the end. On day 69, the day after we just did a lot of enderman farming, we decided, well, before we go to the end, we are going to need a lot more potions. So uh, I went ahead and just kind of mainly stuck around, accidentally throwing a pearl, mainly stuck around the nether wart area just so that we can get a crap ton of nether warts to obviously be able to brew our potions. And forest was just farming. On day 70, all of that enderman farming finally paid off. Forrest and I just kind of start tossing around the eyes of Ender just because we're kind of excited that we finally got them and yeah, it's, it's a good day. And in the evening of day 70, Forrest and I decided it was time to head over to the end. Now, uh, clearly we didn't know where the end was, so that's exactly why you use these, you know, these eyes of Ender. They will literally guide you all the way over there. So it actually took us eight days. We traveled thousands and thousands of blocks. We literally ate all of our food, but good thing we brought another type of food because otherwise we literally would be kind of screwed. So after traveling thousands and thousands and thousands of blocks, we got very close to the area. We were inside of some major jungle biome and uh this is like the first jungle biome we've actually came across but as you guys can see the next time we threw the eye of ender it literally went straight down which means we have arrived so forest starts digging his way down we are kind of freaking out right now because we have worked so hard to get to this point in the game we are so close to the end and closely following behind Forrest, there it is, the I Spy achievement. We have finally arrived at the end portal. Now all we gotta do is find where it is. We are currently in the stronghold, but we need to locate the actual entrance without dying to these creepers, because I, I promise you guys, there was a lot of creepers and skeletons in here, man. It's not fun. In the morning of day 80, Forrest and I have finally found the end portal the last thing that we need to do now is essentially just light up the portal so what do i do i just quickly block our backs just make sure no other animal or creature is going to kill us but uh, as you see the silver fish are still spawning here so we give them a quick smack but yep all we gotta do now is light up the portal here we go ladies and gentlemen we are placing in the final eyes of ender and we are going to be approaching the end. This is going to be insane. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, Force and I start popping our speed potions, our strength potions. We have our healing. We already popped our slow fall potion. And without further ado, 
We're going in the end. Here we go. We actually initially spawn in this little like box here and we got to dig ourselves out. All right, and the first thing we do as we get out of the hole is immediately start breaking these healing barriers, essentially. What all of these things do on top of these massive obsidian barriers is they're actually regenning the Ender Dragon's health. Some of these healing blocks are actually protected by some big, like, jail cells, essentially, and you actually have to build up on the pillar and then literally shoot them. And look how much damage I took. I thought for sure I was going to die, but luckily I have slow falling. Now we're in a perfect position to shoot the rest of these. After a day goes by, we finally broke all of the regenning barriers for this ender dragon. So now we can actually start doing damage. And as you guys can see, we do quite a lot of damage. Of course, we have a netherite bow, which does insane amounts of damage. We were able to melt down this ender dragon really fast. So you guys can see how effective these netherite bows have been. Forrest and I both have one. And he actually shoots this like ender ball at me and it catches me on fire. I take quite a bit of damage, but I end up being okay. And finally, for the final shot, we were able to slay the ender dragon. Look at this. Forrest and I are freaking out right now because we literally just killed the Ender Dragon, okay? So, of course, after killing the Ender Dragon, you have to get the egg. So, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We were able to get the dragon egg, and now we had to jump back through the Ender Portal, guys. As another day goes by, Forrest and I head back home. So, in the morning of day 82, Forrest and I came down to our enchantment room and we went ahead and disenchanted all of our netherite armor, which means we essentially wiped off every single enchant that we had. After disenchanting all of our armor, what we had to do was put it back in and enchant it with protection 4. We wanted to make sure that we had the best armor possible before heading to the end city. In the morning of day 83, Forrest and I were fully equipped with full protection 4, we had a sharpness 5, and it was time to run over to the end. On day 86, Forrest and I arrived at the end portal entrance, we just had to find exactly where we went down the last time, and here it is. So, the end city, here we come. When we got to the stronghold, we remembered that we actually didn't fully look through this entire stronghold when we first got here. So, obviously, in some of these strongholds, there is a lot of loot, like chests and stuff lying around. So, one of the things we wanted to make sure was, you know what? There's probably some extra loot lying around in these strongholds that we probably should get. And I saw a chest. So, immediately, I am running for the freaking chest. I'm trying to beat Forrest to the chest. And... Look at this, we get a sharpness 3 piercing 4 and a power 3 book. So we kept looting around for an entire day and then on day 87 is when we entered the end. And on day 87 it was time. We ran into the end and it was time to find the secret end city. So once we found the floating end thing in the sky, I don't know even what it's called, but essentially what you have to do is you have to pearl directly into it. And look at that, my first pearl didn't work. My second pearl, I'm not even sure if it worked. Oh, and Forrest, look at that, he's lying down there and he got in. But look at this guys, my second pearl, I almost fall off and die. Remember guys, if I would have died there, we would have lost the entire challenge. And just like that, we made it into the end city. Seven days later, on day 94, Forrest and I finally found what looks to be the end city. There's a ship floating in the sky. Forrest and me are kind of jumping around pretty excited. Now we just needed to figure out how the heck we were going to get up there safely. I think we just decided, you know what, we're not going to be able to pearl up there. And these freaking endermen are going to teleport onto us and hit us if we try to build. But we just ended up killing the endermen that were aggroed on us. And then we decided we might as well drink a slow falling potion. Because if we do end up getting hit off, we do not want to die. So we build right up. 
So Forrest and I make it here. I end up getting hit by some levitating thing that keeps making me levitate. But there it is on the wall. Look at that. We got Prot 3 boots. We got just some goodies in there. On the wall is the Electra. That is what's going to allow us to fly around. And that is freaking sick. So what do I do? I go to the edge of the ship and say, hey, Forrest, look at this. And I dive off of it, flying across from the ship all the way over to this like mansion looking thing. I'm not even sure what it is. And I was hoping I wasn't going to fall all the way down and die. But look at these. These shuriken things are making me levitate in the air. So I was kind of praying that I didn't fall down and die. But yeah, that was freaking awesome. And finally, after six days of running in the end, we found the second end city. We actually essentially basically ran out of steak. We didn't want to risk losing all our food and die, so we ended up farming these little fruit thingies, these purple things, and luckily they actually dropped food so we were able to live. So just like that, Forrest and I built up, and look at that. The Electra is on the wall. We got some more diamonds, some emeralds. We got some Prot 4 Unbreaking 3 Pants, and just a few ores. But my goodness, that was pretty epic. Not only do I have an Electra, or an Elytra, rather. I guess I just realized I said it wrong. But we both have one now. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to get Forrest an ender dragon head. And on day 100, while Forrest went over to grab his ender dragon head, after I stopped levitating, I figured why not punch him off the edge? And he was able to catch himself. What happens next is something I will never forget. I went to swan dive off with my elytra and I swan dove directly into the concrete. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we survived just barely the 100 days. And oh my gosh, this series was so much fun to make. So guys, if we can get a thousand likes on this video, I will definitely make a new one. Except the new one is going to be completely modded. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. If you enjoyed, drop a like. Tell your friends about this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.